Uh, welcome back to the Junk Swamp, everyone. Uh, today's story is a sad one. Evan Kimball's beloved Plymouth has begun to stop stopping. We suspect someone's stealing his brake fluid. So... Following the puddle, seems to be a little damp here in the uh, rear portion of the brake lines. And it's uh, kind of everywhere at the moment. But of course, I would suspect this line here where they have the leave in place bender spring to trap all the mud and crap. Keep that damp all year round. Get uh, get my eye right close to the situation. Ready for breaking? Let's see if I can tell what the trouble is. Yep, go ahead. Oh, I hear something. Up, uh, up. Uh. Keep pumping. Yep. That's over that way. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. That's enough for now. Cut. This stupid line goes behind the fuel tank there, all the way across the car, emerging on the other side, and then all the way to the front. Can you see that there? Uh, Anything? Some shadows. There. Some abstract art. Can you see two squiggly lines coming from the rear? Yeah. And what they connect to? Somewhere below the master cylinder. I think we'll have to take that front wheel off. So we got the wheel off here up front. And, uh, where is that thing? That's a cat. Uh, there they go. Just out of view. You see that slimy, rusty old thing? Better spray that. What do you? All right, that's gotta have it. So I got the old line wrenches out again. I'm gonna reach up and try to loosen the line from that block there. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get a shot of that because you know, giving me a better grip than an open end wrench on uh, on something like this, a line where I can't get a box end wrench around it. Of course, if it gives me too much trouble, we'll cut the line off and use the box end wrench. On second thought, I'm going to come to the more accessible rear fitting here first and figure out whether this thing is metric or not so metric. There's a 12 millimeter. That's a little sloppy. Let's try it a 7 16 Come on. There, that's a tight fit. Okay, this is not metric. Or it's an 11 millimeter. Who knows? But, I've got a better idea what to expect up there where I can't tell what I'm doing. But first, to get rid of this troublesome cat. There it is! Huzzah! Now I'm gonna try to rescue this original nut, because you never know what kind you're gonna need when you're at the auto parts store, of course. So just to soak it down, put it in the vise, and uh, try to finagle this line out of the middle of it. Rotate. Ah, that's, yeah, that's much better. Thank you! Wish I had a wire brush. How oh, about a chainsaw file? There we go. Carefully, of course. Yes, I know a file only works in one direction. Beauty. 
pretty full. Pull this down at the front end to rescue that nut. Oh, the brake line cutters. There we go. This one well, is not so uh, rusty and it's spinning freely already, so we can take this apart nicely. There it goes. And now, straight in that. Use the tubing cutter. Straighten it a little more. Straighten. And it comes right out. There we go. Since we have to go so far in one piece here, we got to roll a brake line this time. Don't forget to ask for the roll. 25 feet for what? 25 ish dollars? Yep. Since this has to pass over the fuel tank, and there's no way to throw it up there but to feed it through, I'll have to start back here by putting some tape over the end of this line and shoving it across. There's the angle. Theory. Oh no! Uh, obstacles! Come on, you know where you're supposed to go. Let's get this old one out of here. Hopefully, pull it out of there. Pull up, pull up, pull up. There it goes. So much unnecessary springy thing. Alright, fishy fish. God darn it. There you go. No, no. Fish on! Alright, there's the end of it. I've pulled it down with my needle nose pliers while Mr. Kimball applies pressure to the opposite side. Okay, shove it a little bit more. There it comes. Good shell. Now, before I start trying to do this crazy bend up here, to uh, join with the rubber line, which for some reason is facing away from the source of the steel line. Whatever. Before all that crazy bending, let's uh, go ahead and get that nut on there. I'll shove it way up out of the way. Well, I really didn't want to go on there, so I'm going to take cleaning to another level with my 3 16th drill. Perfect. Oh, and it slides right on. Keeping the nut ahead of the sharp bends. I'll try to make this into a shape that will work. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay, well, I can see that's going to work. Now, I'll cut off the excess. Okay, and uh, on brake lines, you'll use a double flare, which is much like a single flare, with this additional die here to roll it back in on itself. 
so you don't have splitting edges on um, higher pressure things like this. So this is a metric set, but it's close enough to 3 16 that being a 4.7 millimeter, we have a 4.75 millimeter. The way to gauge that is with the, the thickness of that die right there to that point, that amount of tube sticking through. After properly lubricating my flare tool, now with that clamped all the way down, install a little die there, which will crush the end of the tube and you know, hopefully the way that we desire. Keep this stuff lubricated. Run this all the way down until the die touches the block. Now that is crushed like so. And you do the traditional flare part. Winding up with something like that. You can get these tools from the uh, loaner program at the auto parts store, which is pretty much you, you just pay for the tool, and if you don't want to bring it back, you don't. And there, a lovely double flared straight line. I'm just going to zip tie this to the old line in this section. I do not risk breaking the plastic clamps that the other brake line is being held by. At this point, I have to figure out pretty precisely the distance from here up to the uh, block that it's screwing into. Because this is the last opportunity to fit the flaring tool on here. Get off of me. Okay, so, I need to get the bleeder valve open and it's been soaking all night. Seems to be something near a 5 16th. Oh, I think it moved. Oh, it's rotating without breaking off. We're lucky. The handy dandy magnetic mount bleeder bottle out again. So that the bubbles coming out immediately go up there, away from the valve, so they don't get sucked back in. Fill up the reservoir! Oh god, not me. Don't spill it everywhere. Holy shit, I didn't. But, uh, oh, where's all that, um, was that liquid there before? Everywhere? There could be a lot of air in the master cylinder. Let's, uh, do some more rapid pumping. Here it comes. Okay, now down. Up. Down. There come the bubbles. Up. Down. Oh. Camera tilted. Hold it down. Holding. Up, down, up, down. Okay, we gotta hold it down for a longer period now. Up, down, ah, the line. Up, 
Time to get a new tube on my bleeding bottle. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. And up. Okay, as we can see, the fluid is solid now. No more bubbles. And it's time to empty this bleeder bottle anyway. Now, we may, with a brake catastrophe like this, have to bleed other wheels. Let's see how it feels. Well, that pedal feels very firm now. So I guess we'll put it back on its feet. And take her for a spin. All right, got my safety harness for my helmet. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Got it, right. Oh, uh, why does the parking brake work? Huh? First brake works. Oh my god. God! Oh. What's that jolting motion? When you press that pedal. God! Wow, it's never uh, breaking. Uh, I think we're going to have to introduce some air into the lines. Yeah, it's like. It's like you didn't know it was broken until you fixed it. Cutesy. And it's not yanking one direction or the other? Well, that's quite good. Quite, quite good indeed. Oh my god, I feel um, like the Chinese money. The, the change. Radio then. Thanks for watching. What am I looking at? I don't have any more of those stands. This is art. Random putting the camera down is art. It's been raining for a month straight now, and everything's mud, and we're going to fix the car that won't stop.